start first with the largest player in the space, and that, of course, is Anglo Gold Ashanti. Came out of the Anglo-American group, but has no connection anymore. Merged with Ashanti, which was a Ghanaian-based operator. It's got a diverse portfolio of mining operations all around the world. So it has to be first said that it's not dependent on its South African assets particularly anymore. And the ones that it retained, of course, were the highest value, highest margin operations. The market capitalization, though, you'll see in a minute the share price not looking too happy. 34 billion rand. That is the size of this company, which is smaller than a mid-sized retailer in our South African market. It's been through waves of successive restructuring. So the most current metrics indicate that it's not profitable, therefore no price to earnings ratio, not currently in dividend distribution mode. So Gerbrandt, I mean, this is the sector leader, highest quality assets, management's been pretty forthcoming under the uh, CFO, then CEO Venkat. Yeah. How do you feel about these guys? Yeah, look, it's the most diverse, as you said there. They operate 20 different mines in 10 different countries all yeah. over the continents globally. Um, they, they certainly, from, I think the most important factor is what these guys all in sustaining cost is uh, yeah. per ounce. And, and they operate at the moment, I think, at 964, so let's say 970. And the gold uh, price is one dollar. It's 1,090 or something. Or something. Yeah. So they're actually still making money. And I yeah. think at the moment, they're the only one making money on the all-in cost structure. Uh, so, yeah, th that must be bu bullish for them. The only negative here is they got a, a large debt to equity exposure, so their balance debt. sheet, so their balance sheet aren't that strong. There's the share chart. Yeah. Now these share charts don't look happy. <laughs> no, not at all. Um, and, and, and and the debt to equity has been borrowing people. So over yes. the last quarter, I think a month or two back, they said they're going to sell the the Cripple Creek or some uh, yes. operation in the US. Because they did look like three, four months ago at quite a significant restructuring yeah. and a split and a rights issue, but yes. then they can that they for can the time that. being. Yeah. And uh, B, I think though. the pricing were wrong, so they sold some of their assets. Uh, it was non-operation, uh, non-production assets yeah. yet. They sold those for eight hundred and seventy. Uh, million dollars so price, that's going to be yeah. used to pay off some of its debt uh, on the balance sheet so I think they're looking much healthier than they did two months back yeah. and they seriously cheaply priced uh, historically yes so that's obvious from the share chart so is it your contention that if the gold price sort of stabilizes at the current level um, they could possibly do more to cut costs but they're probably the best positioned but what's the catalyst to drive this higher I mean why would you be wanting to own the stock or buy it with fresh money today I think valuation tells you it's very cheap. Mm. And if these guys can produce at those, and, and the, the gold price are already at five-year lows, um, you need the dollar to soften a bit, and you'll see some upside yep. on, the, on, the, on the gold price. Yep. Uh, you need some inflation coming through globally, and people are talking that that might happen in a year or two's time. Yep. Uh, so there's a few catalysts that can do it for you, and you're buying a cheap asset at the moment. So hot or not? I'm going to go hot. This is the big boy, and um, <laughs> it, it's seriously the cheapest it's been ever at 80 Great. rand a share. Good, good. So that's a ballsy view there. I'm going to go with not hot because I'm concerned there could be further downside to the bullion price, but that's not a particularly well-informed view. 